Hello, this is Leonardo, and in this video, I'm going to show you an example of upsampling and downsampling in the Boot language. And so, what I'm going to cover in this example is just like the basic theory, and I'm going to make also a simple implementation. And I'm going to point you to the to the theory that you can follow, you know, if you want to do something more complicated. So, but the first thing is, why would you want to do this? Let's say that that you have a a signal that has these harmonics. This is, this is a, a simple frequency, frequency representation. We have a fundamental and then we have lots of harmonics. And uh, if we have a sample rate uh, of this value, we know that we, we will have a Nyquist frequency, which is half of that frequency. And what's going to happen if, is if we sample this signal that has lots of harmonics, any harmonic that is going to be that is outside the Nyquist frequency is going to be fold back, and and it's going to turn into aliasing. And if in in a few cases where the aliasing is not that bad, we, what we can do is upsample the signal and and use and, and use instead the upsample signal or the oversample signal to. Uh, and filtering it a bit in order to create less less harmonic. So let's say that I have my sig my same signal, and I upsample it by a factor of approximately two. Let's then my sample rate is going to move to this point, and my Nyquist frequency is it's here. And now and you can see that all the harmonics that this signal has are below the Nyquist, so nothing is uh, nothing is uh, alias. And when I have this signal, I can operate on this one. Uh, let's say doing distortions, uh, also doing uh, some kind of filtering on or, or any other complex algorithm that I have. And I have like a, a wider margin where I can act on it. So, and once I have processed my signal at, at the highest uh, sampling rate, uh, what I can do is, is filter, uh, setting a filter, let's say with a cutoff frequency here. Which is uh, the point where, uh, let's say that this is the, the 20, 22 kilohertz. And this is the point where, uh, uh, from here, uh, uh, high, like higher at this frequency is, is, is uh, things that cannot be here. So we filter. And then what we're going to do is, is doing decimation or downsampling which is we're going to return the signal to its original sample rate, which was here. But we can see that, that we have uh, filtered out most of the, of the harmonics that are uh, above the Nyquist. And then we're going to have like no, no, no aliasing or much less aliasing. And it's usually made in this way. So we have our original signal. Then we upsample. Then we process the signal. Then we can filter it and downsample it, and you can see that this I, I have this in a in a box because these two uh, steps can be merged into one. And yeah, this is one thing that I'm gonna show you. So first, let's focus on the upsampling. For doing the upsampling, uh, there are, uh, what we need to do is is interpolation, and there are different uh, algorithms to make interpolation, which means that we need to find uh, points in between our samples. Consider that we have this signal. This is a, a sine wave, and I'm creating points. So I, I sample a sine wave with 15 points, and this is the plot that I get. You can see these are the 15 points, and and yeah, we have these spaces. What I want to do uh, when upsampling is is getting points in between these two these two points. And if if I just make a plot with Mathematica. Mm, at this line plot, what it's doing is connecting these points with lines, and I can see that this new signal, uh, it's it's close to the original, but I can still see like these two straight lines. But but this is this is gonna help me to to find a, a point in between. But there are also other more complex interpolation methods. For example, uh, if I if I use uh, use the function interpolation. I think that it performs 
a second order or third order interpolation. It depends on, on the data. It automatically detects it. And then I have this new data. And then if I plot it, we can see that this, this signal is quite smooth and it's very similar to the to the original sine wave. And, and if I use a higher higher order interpolation formula, uh, we can get uh, points which are much softer and close to the original signal. And yeah, so what I'm doing here, I'm taking my new, uh, I'm, I'm sampling the new signal over this formula, uh, and I'm and I'm oversampling it four times. So I'm taking for each point, I'm, I'm producing four points. And this is my oversample data. And if I plot it against the original data, we can see that this is original. We had 15 points and our oversample signal has 16 points. And so how, how, how can we do this, this kind of interpolation? Uh, the simplest way is, is using the linear interpolation, which is this case. And to do that, uh, we can just take the, the equation of the line where we have two points uh, uh, that are corresponding uh, x1, y1, x0, uh, y0. And we want to cal calculate the points in between. So we, we can just take two of these points uh, and obtain an equation for those two points and then just request uh, points in between. So this is my base formula. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to replace x1 by a value of 1 because we are making one step, one sample step. And x0 is going to be equals to 0 because it is my start point. And then I'm going to replace x by the value that I want. So let's say I want to know the value at time 0. It's obviously uh, y0. My value at time uh, 1 is going to be y1. And then I can do, I can request anything in between. For example, if I'm going to do 4x interpolation, I can get like the first quarter. And then we get this formula. Then we can get two quarters, then uh, three quarters. And of course, four quarters is going to be one. So let's, let's create this in Vult. And what I have in Vult, I created this function, which is going to do hard clipping. So it's just taking a signal, multiplying it by a gain, and clipping the signal to the range of minus 1 and 1. And right now, there is no, it's, it's a naive wave. There is no, no uh, alias suppressing or anything. I'm just going to compile this. Uh, text to arguments. OK, I need to pass the parameter. So this is compiled, and it's installed. And it's here in my regular hack installation. And you can see, let me lower the volume. I have, let's insert a sine wave. And we can see this is my sine wave. Let me lower the frequency. We, and we have here the, the spectrum analyzer, which shows me that we have a, a peak at this frequency. And if I keep increasing the gain, we start with clipping and we can see that we have all these uh, new harmonics that are, that are added. I'm just going to put it to the maximum. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the frequency. And one thing that we can hear and see is that we have aliasing. All these harmonics that are supposed to be in some, somewhere in this plot are being folded back and they are uh, mixing here as, as aliasing. So you can see that uh, we have peaks going in one direction and peaks going in the other direction. So that's the aliasing. Let me close this and go in here to, to write the code for the upsampling. So in for the upsampling, I'm going to create a function called like that, upsample. I'm going to take a, a value which is correspond to Y, y1, uh, which is going to be this one. And in order to upsample, I need to know I need to know the previous value. So I'm going to say that y men y0. 
this is my previous value. And when I to, when I move forward, y0 is gonna be to y1. Like that. So uh, now I need to calculate the values. And I and I already have a formula for the first one, which is gonna be a one quarter. I'm just gonna copy this thing. And I'm gonna call it value point one. So my point one is gonna be this. Let me just fix the code. Like this. Then I need to calculate the point two, which is this. Two point zero. Then I'm gonna calculate my point three. And that's it. I have my three points, and then I, I make my current value. I turn my current value in my previous. That way, it's it's advancing in time. So let's return p1, p2, p3. If I call this function, uh, so okay, here I have to make a decision. In this case, uh, this hard clipping signal is not um, probably. It doesn't make any sense if I if I uh, upsample the input signal and then process it. Probably it's going to be pretty much the same if I do just uh, that P4, it's equal to her clipping this one, and then I can use P4 to obtain uh, P1, P2, P3 by upsampling the output. So, okay, at this point I have these four, four signals, four points that I obtained with only one and uh, and yeah and this is after the hard clipping so as I mentioned probably in this in this specific example doesn't make any sense to to call four times the hard clipping mm. okay now let's mm, let, let's go to the next part we have uh, our signal of sample uh, we're at this point, and what we want to do is uh, we already have it process of sample, and we're gonna filter it. And there are different ways that you can perform a filtering. You can, for example, uh, put a, a regular uh, infinite response filter and calling it four times. But in this case, I think that the most most effective is is using a fear filter. To, to perform the, the filtering. So Mathematica has this function that is very convenient. I can just request for a low pass uh, that is gonna have like one quarter pi as, as frequency. And this is the order of the filter. So this is gonna give me a filter that has 32, order 32, and we can see the response uh, of this filter. We can see that it has like a high ripple then it goes down and then we have a, a bit of ripple so if we uh, yeah if we take a 16 it's going to be a given worse so let me go with 64 64 order uh, with this frequency yeah and we can see that we have this ripple and then uh, this, this slope and this part is the attenuated section so what I have here as well it's uh, is is the code for a for a filter fil filter written in Vault, and I can simply copy these coefficients, put them here. Let me remove this, and I say that it's a order sixty four, like this. So one thing that you need to notice is that the fear filter, uh, the, the higher the order it is, 
the more computations that we need to make. So for every sample that we calculate, we need to make uh, this uh, multiplication and this multiply accumulate. So even when a higher order field filter is more effective, it's going to consume more CPU. Okay, so I have that that filter, and yeah, let's test it. What I need to do, I need to calculate. Okay, so first I'm going to implement the naive way, and then we're going to do some optimization. I need to calculate the point for a O0. So I'm going to create an instance of the filter. Important, this is a named instance because we're going to reduce it. So this is going to be fear dot do p1. And then I'm just going to copy this four times and change. This is going to be p2, p3, and p4. p2, p3, and p4. So what I'm doing here, I'm uh, calling the same filter, the same instance of the filter with the, all the points that we have. We're obtaining four different points, and now we're going to do the decimation. In this case, the decimation is very, is very easy because we have we upsample by four. And in order to downsample by four, we just need to uh, to dismiss these values and take the the fourth one. And when you do upsampling with uh, uh, at ratios that uh, that are different, that are not integers. What you're gonna have is that uh, you, your downsampling is gonna be, it's not gonna be as easy as this. So I'm just gonna take this one, and this is 04. Let's see if I did everything correctly. I have this upsampling, I have the four points, I have the filter, and let's compile it and see what happens. Okay, so uh, let me change this signal to one with more harmonics. Try to figure out. Just, I'm gonna do one thing just to make sure that I have set the correct frequency. Let me divide this by eight. Okay, so my filter is quite uh, the, the low pass is quite uh, low. Let me paste this. What is this? Let me copy this part. Compiled. Okay, so with with that cut of frequency, seems like uh, our filter is is uh, it's around ten k. Uh, but yeah, but you can listen that we still have aliasing because. The level of these harmonics uh, is is quite quite high, so we will we will need more attenuation. But I'm gonna keep it like that, so around 10k of cut of frequency. And one important thing that I wanted to show you, uh, let's see the the power consumption. So this one is going around uh, 2.5 percent of of usage for this simple function because, and that's because of the of the filter. But if we go back here, one nice property that the filter has is that we have to compute uh, all these multiplications only when we want a sample. And in this case, we are dropping this signal. We are not using it at all. We are dropping this one and also this one. So it doesn't make any sense to compute the fear filter for it. And what we can do is use using this companion uh, function that actually just stores stores it into the memory of the filter, but skips it. So you can do this only in fear filters. You cannot do it in 
in IIR filters. So what I'm doing here, skipping all the samples and only performing the computation for the sample that I want. So if I compile this, you can see that immediately the, the power consumption went uh, lower. Uh, before it was 2 point something, now it's, it's uh, 1.5. Okay, yeah, if I use the saw width, we can clearly see uh, that our cutoff frequency is at this point. But there are still some frequencies that escape from the filter. And the only way of fixing that would be to, to make a more aggressive filter, which means uh, consuming even more uh, computational power. So let, let's see. If I go to 128, you can see it's a little bit more steep. Uh, and let me go to pi over 4, which is going to be a cutoff frequency around 20k. So, yeah, it just moved a bit. So, let's take this. Paste it. So a lot of multiplications that we are doing here. I said that this was 128. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to compile. And now our, our cutoff frequency is at, is at 20k, so it's somewhere around here. It's a more aggressive filter. But we can still hear aliasing. So, I mean, one thing to take... Oh, we can see that the power consumption went a little bit. It's almost near to 2, but not as high as, as before. Uh, we, we had like 2.5% uh, uh, Okay, so this technique is, is not... Uh, I mean, what we can do is even do more oversampling and also creating a more aggressive filter but it will not help us that much this this technique will help you when you have a little bit to clean or when you want a, a more margin over your nyquist frequency in order to have like more stability into a, into a complex system uh, yeah that's it you can you can try it by yourself and I hope you liked this video and goodbye.